so my name is Juan Ortiz. Um, I'm an artist and activist, at least that's what I consider myself. And I'm originally here from El Paso. I've been here all my life. I come in, uh, the last about 10 years, I've been coming back and forth because of school. Uh, I graduated from the University of Texas El Paso, but then started going to grad school in the Northeast, first at NYU, and then Maryland Institute College of Art, which is in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, I'm getting a lot more involved in projects there, but always like trying to connect them with where I come from, which is in Boston. Okay. So the mural came to be because um, I proposed a project or a series of actually of projects for an organization called the Open Philanthropy Project, and the ones that organizing it called so say it's an agency out of uh, New York, and. Basically what I was proposing was that um, mass incarceration and these other systems of like oppression are talked about in in, uh, in the way of they affect other communities, specifically like the African American community, but not so much the border. And I think they have a real effect on the border. Everything from privatized prisons to, um, to, to detention centers, to young people that go to prison here and are locked in generations of incarceration. I think there's just so many ways in which that particular subject matter affects the border, but one of them that was, they were really receptive to is the way that this SB4 was going to play out in terms of racial profiling, in terms of, of harassing a specific community, which is the Latino community, and anyone who presents as such. Mm -hmm. So it's open, it's an awe that openly dis is going to discriminate against the group of specific group of people. And it's interesting, I think, because in Northeast, people understood that concept of you can come from a place that you know, but that the world tries to dictate what it's like. People in New York feel that because people add so much emotional, like they have these preconceived notions of what New York is and you can't get them out of it. That's their reality and that's the one they want you to accept. Uh, same with Baltimore. It's a bad place you don't go. And like going there, it's being so fruitful and productive as an artist, as a student, as just of somebody who's there. When I had been told for so long, it's it's a place that, that was totally opposite of that. It was really shocking. So I understand when I come and say that the border's not that way, that El Paso's not that way, that we have a history of this like beautiful struggle and resistance, uh, politically, culturally, aesthetically, and we have a real brotherhood with Mexico and. and like us that are indigenous people to this area or have generationally been here, um, I think that drives home more the point and also that we're part of that civil rights coalition and struggle that they recognize mm -hmm. and they place us in. So by saying you're Chicano and we come from the arguably the birthplace of Chicanismo and the Chicano conscience and the Pachuco movement, all of those other movements that then coalesced into this like national phenomenon. So for us, uh, like my my dad, as you can see, is very classically Raramuri people. They're from Chihuahua, and so they've been here for generations. This is all the existence we know between Chihuahua and El Paso. Our people have been be, been here uh, for a very long time, and I think that that's a very different aspect of what it being American is compared to some other people, in which you're that blood tie uh, to the land is because it's. Like my grandma used to say, even if the land isn't fruitful, it's still your land. So the idea that you can live in a place that has had challenges and oppressions, but that you're still like um, tied to it in a way that doesn't have to do with how much you can give me, or it, it's the land of milk and honey, that it's, it's your land. So part of that is the struggle. Siempre dicen en español, a lot of ways, that's the part I love about El Paso, that pluckiness, that resilience is, is the type I was, this is the environment I grew up in, the atmosphere, and that really fed me. Um, and the other thing was that it was a place uh, of a really socially conscious, but rebellious kind of uh, culture that birthed Chicanismo, not only Chicanismo, because even in, in white culture here, with Tom Lee and them, with the cowboy that, that kind of uh, gritty kind of um, self-resiliency um, and, and, and pushback and, and kind of being independent that, that we all have in some 
shape or fashion, uh, all the cultures that have been here. And so I, I grew up very cognizant of that. That was a place uh, with, a, with a very long history. I very much see the things that we're talking about in the mural as the latest iteration of that struggle because there's been many. I mean, our parents grew up in the generation that couldn't, and our grandparents in the generation where you couldn't eat at the same table as white people as equals. We were part of Jim Crow and we suffered the ramifications of Jim Crow. And when I go to the Northeast, the African American community, the Asian community, they all understand, whoa, that's where we fit in. Yeah. It's seeming, they're trying to make it seem as if the brown struggle in this country is new and it's actually very, very old. Mm -hmm. I think that's the real powerful, well, for us, uh, Frank's really good at um, visually being able to make tie ins and make kind of like aesthetically, philosophically, being able to tie in between like modern issues. Or I just speak to it uh, a lot more often than Frank, who winds up doing a lot more just artistic production because he's so busy. And that's the, the really interesting part. There's so much going on here all the time. People pass by and comment or ask us if we if we can do that somewhere else. It, it, but that's what's really cool. People will stop by and start helping. There was a little girl who started helping with this oh, girl, that's awesome. and it was such a beautiful thing because mm -hmm. that's the whole point. So to talk about the statue, I think it was came up from a very simple concept of mine, which I had done before. I had made a little green card for the Statue of Liberty um, because uh, her patina was green. I thought it was a real good interplay on uh, the greenness of a, of a, pa of a passport, of a, of a green card, what they call a green card. And then um, to remind people that she was an immigrant, um, that she had a birth, like a, a year she was created. But this idea that under it, she was still copper. I think she's been displayed in so many other facets and fashions. And when I went to go see her personally, it was really interesting. The poem that was at the bottom called, uh, I think it's called uh, The New Colossus. But in it, it talked about her name specifically. The, the, the author was naming her the mother of exiles. So this idea between her being brown, copper, bronze, um, and, uh, being an immigrant and being never portrayed that way, always very being portrayed sometimes as white, sometimes as lime green or light green. I think it's just classic of how things are uh, you're, uh, made Eurocentric or, or, or turned into like assimilated white culture, when in reality she's a very brown immigrant. So that idea, I love the idea of having a brown little girl kind of seeing herself reflected in this motherly figure um, and seeing like the promise in it and, and that tension between what's being promised and the reality. The reality is it's not been a very accepting place. The reality is it's, it's taken a turn, a historically, uh, it's a, a turn that historically has happened here in the United States where America becomes xenophobic and starts becoming oppressive. And there's been cycles of that throughout its history. I think that that's important. Um, and this moment, this particular place and time to remind people of that. And then also the people wanted a memorial to people who died in the desert um, or died getting here. So there's various ways in, people, in which people die. So one of them is the bestia. So we're making tracks that's, that have this kind of interplay with the, ray, the beams of um, luminous beams that you'll find around the Sacred Heart. And it's a cactus Sacred Heart in memory of the desert. Uh, with railroad spikes, is kind of like the cross. The whole mural, I think, in a lot of ways, the, uh, which was people's handmade kind of folk art, um, in which they asked, you know, it was kind of an ask from from their God to protect them or, or be thankful for something. Mm -hmm. So it has that kind of feel to it. Sir? Yes. Wow. Uh, and and he am with, and it's really weird because of his kind of his inner circle there in, in, in New York, I, I mean, in, um, in the Northeast, because he went to Yale. I mean, he went to Yale with people that are now so much more acclaimed in the artistic world when Frank does just so much as powerful work and he does it in community, he does it so humbly and he does it so quietly. But he has all of that kind of knowledge and aesthetics that come from there. And we worked in black spaces. We have a lot of, of of friends in the new black arts movement. It's really been a powerful thing to, for both of us to see that unfold, start working more with each other. I've had him in shows in Baltimore. 
so he was he basically designed a good part of this and helped me design the rest and vice versa we just both work uh, cohesively very well together and Edgar Reyes who's from Baltimore who was undocumented himself who organizes in Baltimore does a lot of things in the community he just he's the same way he's really seen Frank as a mentor kind of me as well and so we both really try to take him in our wing to bring him to the border to do more things because he was very much raised in Virginia and and growing growing numbers of brown people in that part of the country are really curious about Chicanismo, the civil rights struggle, what our struggle is here because they're relatively new to that struggle so they're not well as well versed they've never been to the border other than the times they crossed and never wanted to come back so it's been really interesting to have them come back participate in what they're doing Tanya Garcia didn't do the mural piece but we had to do a lot with the documentation of it technically I mean I'm, su I'm supposed to the grant was given to me but I told them very much I'm a community artist and so everything ever uh, my thesis was literally about using community organizing as a artistic praxis um, which means practice and theory together so and then people always ask me how and I was like you want to know how <laughs> How you do that, which sounds very academic, is you just stand here and when people come and ask you what you're doing, tell them we're making art, do you want to help? And while we're working, tell them, by the way, we have a community association meeting or we're doing a greening project or neighbor, me neighbor, did you know him? He lives right around the corner. And that's how you get people of different races, different socioeconomic backgrounds, they all live in the same space to start working collaboratively. <laughs>